Between 430 and 410 BC, nearly one third of the Athenian population was killed by a mysterious disease. People believed that it was a kind of divine punishment for sins against God, and hence, for that reason, called it the Black Death or Black Plague. The aftermath was the loss of countless lives, only because humans did not understand the real cause behind it at the time. Today, we are aware that Black Death or Plague is actually a disease caused by microorganisms. And along those lines, we should be thankful to the various scientists who contributed in bringing this knowledge of the microbial world to light. This quest to learn more about these invisible entities started in 1674 when the Dutch scientist Anthony van Leeuwenhoek spotted tiny swimming microscopic animals while fiddling with his microscope. He called them animalcules, a term which was later replaced by the word microorganisms. We concluded our earlier session with a discussion on how these microorganisms are present everywhere and how they are among the biggest factors for causing disease. So in this session, let's understand the broad categories of these microbes and also see how they act against us. Microbes are classified into five major groups. Let's look at each one by one. Bacteria make up the first category. They are a very complex group of life forms. Thousands of species of bacteria are present on Earth. They are found to have various shapes and are present as solitary entities or exist in pairs, chains, or groups. Among all microbes, bacteria top the list of disease-causing organisms. Where tuberculosis, jaundice, cholera, typhoid are just some of many examples of diseases caused by them. Let's consider typhoid as an example for our study. It is caused by a bacterium called Salmonella typhi. Which spreads through contaminated food and water. Upon infection, a person suffers from continuous fever and develops rashes on his skin. It can become lethal if no preventive or curative measure is taken. To understand this, let us consider the well-known case of typhoid Mary. In the summer of 1906, when Charles Warren took his family on vacation, he found that in just a few weeks, half his family had fallen ill with typhoid. It was suspected that the recently hired cook Mary Mallon could have been the cause. Malin's employment history involved typhoid outbreaks, which had followed her from job to job. She was reported to be typhoid positive. Being an asymptomatic carrier, she carried the bacterium without actually showing any obvious symptoms. For this reason, she came to be infamously known as Typhoid Mary. Therefore, in order to keep typhoid at bay, one should not only maintain proper sanitation and cleanliness, but also refrain from consuming unhygienic food. And in case a person does not practice these methods and contracts an infection, then appropriate antibiotics should be taken as a cure. We'll now move on to the second group of microbes, which were once confused with plants due to their appearance. Yes, we're talking about fungi. They are single-celled entities and exist either individually, like yeast, for example, or in clusters such as molds or mushrooms, which are visible to the human eyes and are also present in a variety of shapes, sizes, and types. Hair and skin diseases, candidiasis, and the ringworm infection are caused by fungi. Let's study the ringworm disease. It is caused by any of three species of fungi and spread mostly through direct or indirect contact. Red circular rashes over the skin and hair loss are among the more common symptoms. In order to prevent these infections, one should avoid sharing personal items and should use antifungal drugs if an infection does occur. Protozoa form the third group of microbes. Protozoa means little animal, as they vary in size from micrometers to centimeters. They are interesting because they mainly feed on bacteria, but they also eat other protozoa and sometimes fungi. Sleeping sickness, kala azar, dysentery, malaria are a few diseases caused by them. Let us take the widely known disease malaria as an example. Most people misinterpret that this disease is caused by mosquitoes, female Anopheles mosquitoes in particular. In reality, mosquitoes are just vehicles or carriers. The female mosquito carries the disease-causing protozoan species called Plasmodium. Repeated chills, shivering, fever are just few of many symptoms of malaria. 
Malaria can be prevented from spreading if we take certain measures. Use of anti-malarial drugs too have been proven to be effective in recovering from the disease. Whenever we visit a nearby sea or coastal area, we often notice a large spread of green mat on the rocks. Interestingly, these form our fourth group of microbes, called algae. They can also grow on trees and soil where enough water is available. They exist in a variety of shapes and sizes as well. It's fascinating to know that other than trees, they also produce a good percentage of the oxygen that we breathe. But as useful as they are, algae are also known to cause diseases that are quite uncommon and which are restricted to the coastal areas. Consumption of seafood mostly contributes to the onset of these diseases. They cause symptoms like stomach upset or diarrhea, which can be taken care of by medicinal fluids and electrolyte balancing concoctions. Now, let's know more about the last group. So far, the category of microbes we dealt with in the first four groups broadly fall under the class of living entities. But now, we have a fifth category which hosts something that has baffled scientists for years. Whether it's living or non-living is still a matter of debate. What we're talking about is the virus. A virus is an infectious particle that displays both characteristics of life and those of inanimate objects. It is this ability that makes them even more interesting to study. Compared to bacteria, microscopes which are bigger, advanced and which have better resolution capabilities are required to see a virus. Simply put, viruses are tiny bits of genetic material carried in a shell or coat having many shapes. Many are multi-sided or polyhedral in nature. These viruses infect every living thing and are present everywhere. Smallpox, chickenpox, HIV, influenza, poliomyelitis are just a few examples of many viral diseases. Poliomyelitis, otherwise known as polio, is a disease which is named due to its causative agent, the poliovirus. It enters the body through food or water. The virus multiplies in intestinal cells and then reaches the brain through blood, causing stiffness of the neck and loss of head support. There is no better place to apply the phrase prevention is better than cure than in the case of polio. And that's mainly because this disease has no cure. As a result, massive polio prevention campaigns such as oral polio vaccines and pulse polio programs are run by the government to deliver polio vaccines to children at regular intervals. Up to this point, we viewed microbes as harmful invaders, but they also have the ability to be our protectors. The discovery of the antibiotic penicillin by Alexander Fleming is a classic example for this. So tune into our next session to know how these little creatures can act like valuable assets to us. Until next time, keep watching, keep learning and follow your curiosity.